I am here to do my favorite thing, which is to preach about Jesus and talk about the divine person of the Holy Spirit. I believe that the age of miracles has not yet passed because the miracle worker is still alive and His name is Jesus Christ. There is no sickness, Jesus cannot heal. There is no disease, He cannot cure. There is no problem, He cannot solve. There is no soul, He cannot save. There is no sin, He cannot forgive in your life. The Spirit of God is here. You're not waiting for Him. You're not looking for Him. Yes, the Bible says He is omnipresent. He is everywhere present. But right now, His manifest presence is here. And that's something to be excited about. There are so many sermons you have heard. How many of them have really changed your life till today? You've heard sermons on faith before. You've heard sermons on belief before. You've heard sermons on the Holy Spirit before. But how many of them have really shaped the course of your life and your belief in how you relate with God. So that's why today I don't want to just give you some words that you think, oh, that guy can rhyme in his sermons. Gosh, that guy knows how to talk. I love his British accent. No, what I want you to do is be able to go away with an impartation that starts affecting your life, that starts changing your thoughts and starts influencing your ways and your words in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So my name is Edward Gardner. I'm a pastor at Hungry Generation Church, especially in the Pasco area. I am here to do my favorite thing, which is to preach about Jesus and talk about the divine person of the Holy Spirit. I believe that the age of miracles has not yet passed because the miracle worker is still alive and his name is Jesus Christ. There is no sickness, Jesus cannot heal. There is no disease, he cannot cure. There is no problem, he cannot solve. There is no soul, he cannot save. There is no sin, he cannot forgive in your life. So if you believe that, it's time to take it, take the Word of God at face value. Take the Word of God and do what it says. Take the Word of God and believe it for what it says it is. Don't judge the Word you've, you're going to hear today by your past experiences. Because as you felt the presence coming down here, the Spirit of God is hovering, just like He hovered in the book of Genesis chapter 1. And then God spoke, let there be light. And there was. The Spirit of God is hovering over here right now. He's hovering over you because He's about to speak a word and make a change. When the wind of God blows on you, blows in you, and blows through you, changes are beginning. So are you ready to go with me? Yes. Amen. So to do that, to start, let us rise up on our feet. And let us ask the Lord. I don't just want to hear this with my natural ears, with my natural ability. I want to hear this with my heart. I want to hear this with my spirit. I want to receive this word in my heart, not just in my ears and my mind. Pray right now. Repeat after me. In the name of Jesus Christ. O oh Holy Spirit, fall afresh on me. Open my heart to your word. Open my heart to your faith, open my heart to your spirit in the name of Jesus. I want to receive this word. I want to receive impartation through this word. I want to be the doer of the word in the name of Jesus Christ. You may have your seat in the presence of God. Are you ready now? Are you feeling fueled and fired? I want to take you to the book of Psalm chapter 19. And uh, all of this is still going to be introduction. We'll get to the message eventually. <laughs> Psalm 19 from verse 1. It says, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament shows His handiwork. Day unto day utters speech, and night unto night reveals knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. When you look at all of creation, it testifies of the presence of an omnipotent, omniscient, all-knowing, powerful, intelligent creator. Amen. 
You cannot look at the majestic snow-capped mountains, the beautiful lush forests, or the streams and brooks and not think, wow, someone designed this. Someone had a purpose for this. This just didn't just big bang and happen. This was big let there be light and it happened. However, God's desire was not just to create nature for the sake of it, to show nature and his glory, which it does. But God created nature because his greatest creation was you and me, man. I believe inside every person here and every person watching online, there is a unique part of the nature of God that can only be manifested through you. There is no one at all who is born without a gift from God. There is no one at all who exists without a purpose from God. And though others may do similar things, no one else will ever achieve what God has destined for you. Your destiny is not a competition with someone else. Someone else can't take the place God has for you. But you can choose to get there. You can choose to get some of the way there or you can land on the throne God Almighty has prepared for you to sit on. Amen? Amen. The reason God did this was so that he could restore the relationship and fellowship between God and man, which was broken by sin. There is no way we can relate with God without the Holy Spirit. And he wanted to restore to us the relationship with God, being one with him in spirit and in truth, with all our mind, all our heart and all our strength. And he said, look, I will create man in my own likeness. And with that, we have free will. And with that, in Genesis 1 verse 28, God said, and I give you dominion over everything. And truly, God has given us dominion over the land, over the sea, over the sky. God has given us the ability to get to the moon, although some people debate whether it's all just a hoax or not. God has given us the ability to tame mountains, huge, mighty, rocky mountains. We have the ability to cut a path through it and make a train, a train way. God has given us the grace to flatten hills and make a smooth road service or, or a good house. God has given us the ability and the wisdom to direct the path of rivers, to direct the path of water, to direct direct the part of streams. God has given us the ability to turn desert land into fertile ground and farmland. God has given us the ability even to quench the violence of fire when it comes. But there's one element that till now man cannot touch and that is the wind. Yes, we may harness it with windmills. Yes, we may harness it with turbines. But just like the Lord, it is unstoppable. It is irresistible and there's nothing you can do to stop the wind. This is how Jesus wants you and I to live as Christians. Part of God's unstoppable nature, part of God's irresistible nature, the part of God that cannot be stopped is the wind of the Holy Spirit. And I want to take you now to the book of John chapter three. This will be the title of today's message, the Holy Spirit, the wind of God. Can you say that to yourself? The Holy Spirit the wind of God. In case your neighbor didn't hear, turn and tell them as well. Hallelujah. We're going to John chapter three from verse three. I'm gonna read from the New King James Version. Jesus answered and said to him, most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. So Jesus makes a differentiation here. He says, cannot see the kingdom of God. And then a moment later, he gives more emphasis. You cannot enter the kingdom of God. What is the point of seeing something that you can't enter? So we'll we'll talk about that in a moment. Verse six, for that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I say to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but you cannot tell where it comes from and where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the spirit. 
Yes, I know the Holy Spirit is a divine person, but today we're going to talk about the nature that he displays as the wind of God, as the breath of heaven. Are you following me with that? And I believe as we go into this message, the wind of heaven will begin to blow upon you. If you have been stuck in a wilderness season looking for where is the wind of God that led me here, it's about to start blowing on you again today. If you've been lost and thinking, God, wasn't it your plan? Wasn't it your promise? Wasn't it your purpose that brought me to this place? Where are you now? That wind is about to blow again. That wind is about to blow again. That wind is about to blow again in your life. And if you're someone who stepped out too early, you went ahead of God's plan and were looking for, well, I thought I was being blown by the wind, but where is it today? Today you're going to rediscover. You're going to go back to that point where you last heard the voice of God, where you last had that instruction, where you last felt that presence, and He's going to lead you into the next step for your life in Jesus' mighty name. So the first step, talking about the wind of God, is we must find out where is the wind of God. How do we let the wind of God blow us? The wind of God does two things. It acts differently to natural wind because natural wind only blows the outside. The wind of the Holy Spirit blows inside us as well as through us. When the wind of the Holy Spirit blows inside you, changes take place. That is, if you allow Him to blow you. When you allow the Holy Spirit to blow in you, He produces His kind of fruit in your life. The fruit of love, the fruit of patience, the fruit of goodness, kindness, gentleness, humility, and self-control. He gives you empowerment. He gives you understanding. He gives you wisdom. He gives you everything you need to live for Him here and now. But the Holy Spirit is a gentleman and He will never force you to change more than you can tolerate. And if you, if he wants to lead you, can I have a volunteer? Sal, you look like a wonderful volunteer. <laughs> so let's say Sal is each and every one of us, every Christian. And he wants to be led by the Holy Spirit. And he's being led right now. The wind is blowing him from behind, blowing his back. And suddenly the wind stops. What should you do if you don't feel the wind anymore? You should stop and wait, Right? what many Christians we find ourselves doing, keep walking, Sal, is we stop. Once the wind of the Holy Spirit has stopped, we keep going, expecting Him to show up, expecting Him to tell us what to do next, expecting Him, uh, because I'm going, this was the direction He was following in, and before you know it, you're going to walk off the stage. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Sal. I appreciate you. Let's put our hands together for Him. So, we must let the Holy Spirit blow in us to begin to produce His kind of fruit. If you do not allow Him to blow through in you fully and finish the work for the season you are in, you will not be able to be blown to the next season that He has for you. If you say, God, this is as far as I can go. I can't tolerate any more change. No, I don't want you to touch that. No, I don't want you to touch this. He won't force you. He won't take your will from you. He will love you where you are. He will bless you where you are. But you might not feel or receive or achieve the full measure of what He had promised you. You will experience a limited measure. And a limited measure was never the plan of God for His people. Amen. Let's take you, while we're still in the book of John chapter 3, down to verse 31. John 3 from verse 31. Are you blessed so far? He who comes from above is above all. And he who is of the earth is earthly and speaks of the earth. He who comes from heaven is above all. And what he has seen and heard that he testifies, yet no one receives his testimony. But he who has received his testimony has certified God is true. For he whom God has sent speaks the word of God, for God does not give the Spirit by measure. You get that? For God does not give the Spirit by measure. He gives the Holy Spirit without limit to the life of a believer. The Father loves the Son and has given all things into His hands. He who believes in the Son has everlasting life, and he who does not believe in the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God remains on Him. So this is vitally important that you understand it. 
The nature of God is unlimited. It is untamable. It is unchangeable. That is why we're talking about the wind of God. It's the easiest way to demonstrate something that is so powerful, so forceful, and yet we have so little understanding of it. The issue is you don't need to understand the wind to be blown by it. You don't need to understand exactly where the wind is taking you to, to yield and obey its blowing. Abraham was blown upon by the wind of God and God told him, get up, leave your father's land and go. He didn't tell him where he was going. That was the blowing of the wind on Abraham. I'm sure Abraham had a million questions. God, where are we going? Not now, go. Okay, I'm going. Where am I going? Go. Yeah, that's what I'm doing, but where? Abraham didn't wait until he understood the entire instruction of the Spirit of God. He knew, go. And he knew God would fulfill the rest. Sometimes you experience the good shepherd, Jesus Christ as Jehovah Rohi, who will lead you in front of you with his rod and his staff, comforting and protecting you. Sometimes you'll hear the still small voice that spoke to Elijah in the mountain. And sometimes all you will feel is the breath of the Spirit blowing you to where he wants you to be. When the wind blows you, do you understand everything? No. When the wind blows you, applying your mental faculties will hinder you from obeying God in totality. If you are always trying to explain it away, remember the Bible says all things is possible all things are possible to him who believes and obeys, not to him who can explain All things are possible, not to him who can quote the Scripture. All things are possible, not to him who can preach the Scripture, who can memorize the Scripture, or even who can explain the Scripture. All things are possible to him who believes and obeys. We must allow the wind of the Holy Spirit to blow in us. When we yield to the wind of heaven, He will blow in us and then blow through us to a dying and lost world. This is God's plan for you. You are His most priceless, priceless product. You are the best, greatest product of the Holy Spirit. It is His desire to act with you. It is His desire to plan with you. It is His desire to speak with you. He longs for intimacy with you. Amen. We do not believe only for gathering congregations, gathering crowds. That's a great thing, but it's a byproduct of the real issue. The real issue is not that we want noisy, hyper, exciting, excited people. We want people who are white hot with the intimacy and passion and presence of God in their lives. Sometimes you have to wait on the wind. Sometimes the Holy Spirit will give you an instruction to a degree then he expects you to wait with him. Have you ever wondered sometimes why is the Holy Spirit's voice not loud and commanding, not big and booming and without any doubt, I know I have heard the voice of God today. Often it's small. Often it even sounds like your voice. Often it just sounds like a hint or a suggestion. Because he expects you to be close to him. He doesn't expect you to be at the other end of the room and he has to shout to get your attention. He expects you to be intimate with him, to be close with him, to be as close with him as can be so that when he whispers, you hear his voice. When he whispers, you hear the instruction and go. Sometimes we miss where the wind of God is blowing because we are too distant from him. The scripture said, with, the, with their mouths, these people praise me, but their heart is what? Far from me. How can our heart be far from God? Jesus preached it in the, in the parable of the soils or the parable of the sower, as some people call it. He said there are some soils which he referred to as human hearts that are like a path, no depth, no softness, no room for a seed to go. That is a heart that is far from God. Other hearts are stony hearts. Yes, there's soil, there's good soil there, but it's so full of stones, the seeds cannot take root. And when problems come, trials come, persecution comes, they wither away. 
The other set of soil, the other set of hearts are those who are choked out by the cares of the world. They fear man more than they fear God. For if you fear God, the fear of God will drive out all fear. These are, this is how you can be close to God in the confession, close to God in your Sunday attendance, close to God by attending two or three different churches. Congratulations, those who are doing that. <laughs> and yet miss the point of it if your heart is far and not following in your footsteps. Don't miss what the wind of the Holy Spirit wants to do for you because your heart is far and not ready to hear His instruction. I want you to rise up at this point and we're going to pray this over ourselves so that you won't say afterwards, oh, that was a great point. I really enjoyed that part of the message. But no, you're going to act it. You're going to apply it to your life. You're going to pray it to yourself right now. Pray it over yourself right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, I repent in letting my heart be far from you where I could not hear your whisper. Take a moment right now and begin to speak to him, Lord, forgive me for when I've done this. I know I let you down in this. I know I sinned in thought, in word, or in deed, and that took my heart away from you. There was an idol in my heart. There was something else that I said was equal to or as important as you in my life, and that created distance from where I'm supposed to be. Lord, I repent right now for allowing distance between my heart and you. This is a callback to intimacy. This is a callback to the heart of God. This is a callback to the heart of worship in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Some of you are feeling uncomfortable right now because the Holy Spirit is knocking on the door of your heart. He's saying, that's you. But He's not doing this to condemn you. He's doing this because He's about to blow again. He's about to whisper again. He's about to lead you again. Those of you who have been without instruction, wondering, God, what do I do next? Instruction is coming. Revelation is coming. Understanding is coming. The next destination is coming. Take a moment to ask Him right now. Oh, Holy Spirit, breathe on me. Breathe on me. Breathe on me once again. Breathe on my finances. Breathe on my health. Breathe on my heart. Bring me back to life, Lord. Bring me back to intimacy. Breathe on me. Breathe on me. Breathe on me. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name. You may have your seats. If you haven't started feeling the Holy Spirit is on you, we still have two more prayer points to go. Open your heart. Don't let this day pass you by. Don't need to come for another infilling. Don't need to come for another revival. Don't need to come for another one. Next time you come to church, come white hot. Next time you come to church, don't come to church thinking, oh, it was good last time, but I kind of went down a bit this week. The heat went down. I'm not quite sure where the wind blew me this week. No, you can know. And you can come to church next Sunday hotter than you left it today. You can leave church today and this week ahead of you can be an amazing, transformed, a supernatural week because the wind of the Holy Spirit blew you in every direction. He blew you to work. He blew you home. He led you here. He led you there. And before you know it, supernatural things are taking place in your life. You're witnessing to people in Costco. You're witnessing to people in car parks. You're witnessing to people in gas stations. You're witnessing to people in your house, in your street, in your parking lot, in your apartment block. I don't care where it is. If the Spirit of God is leading you, all things are possible for those who believe. Let me take you on to the book of Acts chapter 2. From verse 1. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire and one sat upon each of them. 
And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. The Holy Spirit is the same yesterday, today and forever. He didn't just have a big entry at Pentecost and is now a little wind. He is the same mighty rushing wind that no power of the enemy can stop, that no obstacle can delay, that nothing can block and nothing can hold back. When you are blown by the wind of the Holy Spirit, no obstacle from the enemy can block you, can limit you or can hold you down. You become as unstoppable as the Spirit of God Himself. This is how God wants you to be. This is how God wants your life to be. If you'll but receive it. If you'll but believe it and walk in it hereafter. The Holy Spirit didn't come that way in the book of Acts just so that everyone would know, oh, there was the day of Pentecost. That was really nice for them. But He showed you something so that you can believe for it too. If you haven't experienced the mighty rushing wind of the Holy Spirit in your life that came upon them and blew off every problem and difficulty they were facing, He is here for you today. That wind can fill this room. That wind can blow today. That fire can fall on you as it did for the apostles. There is a flame in heaven for your name. In the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 30, verse 6, I wanted to take you there briefly. King David had an encounter with the Spirit of God. And we know King David had good relationship with the Lord. He was up, he was down, but he was a man after God's own heart. And yet even David, when he was blown by what he thought was the wind of the Lord, he came upon a severe difficulty. In 1 Samuel, chapter 30, from verse 6. Now David was greatly distressed for the people spoke of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and his daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. Say it with me. David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. Yes. And then David said to Abiathar the priest, Ahimelech's son, please bring the ephod here to me. And Abiathar brought the ephod to David. So David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for you shall surely overtake them and without fail recover all. David was doing what God had put in his heart. David was leading attacks subtivert, um, under subterfuge. He was attacking the Philistines while living in their land. God was giving him such victory and such wealth. And then one day they returned from the battle thinking, let's go home and enjoy it a little bit. They got home and found everything gone. Their children were gone. Their wives were gone. They were the husbands. I can't really say the husbands were gone. Their families were gone, their cattle, their sheep, everything, all their possessions were gone. And David's own people, who he had been leading, who he had been bringing in good times, suddenly even wanted to stone him. Yet what David did is not start blaming God. God, is it not your wind that blew me here? Why this failure? God, is it not you that inspired this dream in my heart? Why this battle and warfare? No. David instead humbled himself before God, strengthened himself in the Lord his God, and the wind blew again. Go and you shall recover it all. Whatever Satan has managed to steal from your life, once the wind of God blows upon you, you shall recover it all without fail. Once you let the Spirit of God blow in you and blow through you, Victory will be just like breathing. If you are someone who at one time, it's on your heart, yes, I felt the Lord's leading on something, but it didn't go the way I expected it to. That doesn't mean you didn't hear from God. The fact that there is battle or obstacle or difficulty, maybe even in the situation you're currently in, doesn't show that God is not in it. It shows that a victory is coming. 
There is no victory without warfare. If you're gonna have victory, you gotta go through a warfare to get there. In the same way, if you're gonna get to the promised land that God has for you, you sometimes have to pass through Egypt. You sometimes have to pass through the desert and wilderness before you'll enter the promised land. But if you are one of those people that gets comfortable and says, God, I can't go any further. Like I said, He'll love you, He'll bless you, but you won't get to that promised land. Don't settle for where you are. Believe in God. He has so much more for you. Believe God wants it for you. It is His desire for you to have the kingdom. Don't accept less. Don't settle for less than all the promises God has for you. Don't settle for less than an intimate, white-hot relationship with the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Don't settle for not knowing where your next step should fall. His Word is a light to our path and a lamp to our feet. There is no confusion in God. There is no guesswork in God. When God leads you, you know exactly where you're going, either by the shepherd, by the still small voice, or by the wind of the Spirit. When God says go, you know He says go. He is not a God of confusion. But He expects you to yield to Him. So the first thing we need to do is find the wind and let it blow in us. We must let Him blow in us to create His character, to bring us close to Him, to reform us for His purpose. Some people say, oh, when the wind of God came in the book of Acts, it was just a moment. That was their born again experience and that was it. But that's not true. Let's turn to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 3, 17 to 18. 17 to 18. Are you there with me? Now, the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory. Say from glory to glory. glory. Yes, from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. The experience of the wind of the Holy Spirit in your life is not occasional. It's not once in a lifetime. It should be constant. When the wind is blowing, you can feel it. I don't know those of you who when you were a child used to fly a kite. You know what a kite is? I'm showing my age right now. But when you have a kite, you would put your finger in your mouth and hold hold it up to the wind. And whichever side was colder, oh, that's the way the wind is blowing. And you'd throw your kite up. Colleen, I think we, we understand kites, right? Beautiful. You can tell when the wind is blowing and when he is blowing on you. And you can tell when you've entered a calm, a calm where it's not blowing. Impatience is costly. When the Spirit of God is blowing upon you and gives you visions, gives you dreams, gives you instructions of this is the future, this is what is ahead of you. Impatience will be the most costly mistake that you could make in life. We are commanded to wait upon the Lord. Wait upon the wind of the Spirit. He knows what He is doing. Ephesians 1 verse 4 to 5 says, He has pre-organized every one of us to be in our exact places, in our exact timeline, wherever we are. It was the exact plan of God before the foundation of the world to have you and you and you here at this time as you are. If that's the plan of God, because the Word says it is, then He knows what He's doing. We simply have to trust Him. We might not understand the plan. We might not enter into the fullness of the plan at the beginning of it, but we need to trust Him. This is God's plan. I am playing my role and I will trust Him to play His. Wait for the wind. If you don't and you step out of the place where He is blowing in you, you'll find yourself in a wilderness looking for where is the wind. Where did the wind go? He was blowing me. He was giving me visions. He was giving me dreams. But when you didn't hear go 
and you just stepped out, stepping out prematurely before the instruction of God can cause you to be lost. Some people, because of impatience, step out thinking, I have my calling. I have my task. I know exactly what I need to do. And yet when they step out before the wind of God blows them there, they start looking five years, 10 years. They may even remain on the spot where they stepped out looking for where the wind of God is going to blow them next. If that's you, if you're someone that was blown by the wind of God and you're not sure where he's blowing you now, it's not too late. Jesus knows how to make up for lost time. When Peter lost time all night fishing, the next day Jesus gave him an instruction. And when Peter obeyed the instruction of God, he received in a moment the catch he couldn't get in a year. Jesus knows how to make up for lost time in your life. So wait on the wind. Trust the wind. He will let you know when it's time. You will feel the blow. And when you feel the blow, the breath of the Spirit of God upon you, then nothing can stop it. When Jesus breathed on Peter, he changed his action and his location. He changed him from a fisherman to a fisher of men. He changed him from being by the seaside to being in the city center. When it's time for the Spirit of God to breathe upon you, Something is going to change which your human natural mind cannot understand. You are called upon to believe Him. You are called upon to wait upon the wind. You are called upon to trust Him and follow where He leads. The example we can take from David is that he knew how to find the wind. He knew how to find the Lord. The Bible says he strengthened himself in the Lord. If you don't know what the will of God is or where the will of God is or how to find what God wants for you, I've got a book for you. The will of God is in this book. If you have a Bible, if you have a Bible app, you have the will of God, but it won't read itself. It won't read itself for you. Where you'll say, oh yeah, it can if I have an audible app or whatever. Yeah, we're not talking about that. What I'm talking about is you can have many copies of the Bible on your shelf, but if you never take the word to heart, meditate on it, believe on it and speak it out over your life, don't expect it to work. If you need the wind of God to blow again, if you need the wind of God to carry you from where you are to where the center of His will for your life is, you need to go back into His Word and find it. You need to go back into His Word believing He still has a word for me today. It doesn't matter if you've read that Scripture before. One word may speak today, another word may speak tomorrow, but God sent each one of these anointed words straight into your life. You have no need that someone teach you for the anointing that remains in you will teach you all things. Stop selling yourself short. Stop accepting that. Start accepting yes. Yes, Holy Spirit, I accept your word. Yes, Holy Spirit, I believe your word. You tell me to go, I'm gonna go. You tell me to wait, you're gonna do a work in me, I'm gonna wait. There are three things other than impatience that hinder the wind of God in our life. We have mentioned impatience. The second is pride. The third is fear. And the fourth is the flesh. I want you to rise up to your feet right now and we're going to pray against these four enemies to the wind of the Holy Spirit in your life. Whatever it is you want God to do for you, The things that are holding you back are impatience to wait for God's leading, are pride to say, no, I know better. No, I've tried this. No, I've tried that. Fear. Oh, God let me down in the past. Oh, I tried it before. The prayer didn't answer. I tried God before. It didn't work like this. It worked for other people, but I haven't seen it in my life. The wind is blowing again. It's not time to say stories of failure and build monuments to disaster. It's time to bring memorials to God's power, to God's goodness, to who He says He is and what He can still do for you. 
His power has not changed because of your difficulty. His power has not diminished because you are facing a problem. He still sits on the throne and our condition does not affect His position. Hallelujah. So let us pray right now in any way, shape or form. You are afflicted by the enemy of fear. You are afflicted by the enemy of doubt, of unbelief of impatience, come against it in your spirit right now. Open up your own lips and say it. Lord, I come against the spirit of fear in my life. I will not have fear. Rob me of your blessing. I come against the spirit of unbelief in my life. I will not have the spirit of unbelief. Rob me of the blessing of following the wind of the Holy Spirit. I will not have impatience. Rob me of the blessing of of intimacy with the Holy Spirit. I will not let fear, I will not let pride, I will not let impatience, I will not let the flesh bring me back, hold me back any longer. Enough is enough. Enough is enough for for pride. Enough is enough for fear. Enough is enough. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ we pray. Please have your seats. I have another scripture I want to take you to, the book of 1 John, chapter 4, verse 7 and 12. 1 John, chapter 4, from verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Jump to verse 12. No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us, and His love has been perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in Him and He in us because He has given us of His Spirit. And we have seen and testify that the Father has sent the Son as the Saviour of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in Him and He in God. And we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love and He who abides in love abides in God and God in Him. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as He is, so are we in this world. Hallelujah. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. When you resist the wind of the Holy Spirit, by pride, by the flesh, by impatience. What happens is the wind may be blowing over you, but it won't blow in you. And if it can't blow in you, he can't blow through you to others. The devil and his agents are programming you to be predictable. That is why you can be controlled. That is why you can be manipulated. That is why you can be defeated. What do you mean the devil's programming me? Look on social media, it's pretty easy to see. But that's the blatant one. What about the subtle, crafty one? When you are given to anger, you are predictable to the devil. When you are given to insensitive words, you are predictable to the enemy. When you are given to impatience, to laziness, to gossiping, to addiction, you become very easy for the devil to manipulate, control, and ultimately defeat. But when you yield to the wind of the Spirit of God, you will become a mystery, both to your people and to your enemy. When you yield to the blowing of the wind of God, He will blow you into love and your enemy, will be, your enemy will be confused. He will blow you into patience and your enemy will start losing his mind. He will blow you into humility and the enemy will start getting frustrated because he cannot come against the fruit of the Holy Spirit in your life. Every piece of God's character, of God's fruit, of God's armour have their offensive and defensive capabilities in your life. Once you have God's armour in the fruit of the Holy Spirit, you are untouchable to the enemy. 
it's time for you to let him blow through, blow in you so that he can make you unpredictable to the enemy. You will find yourself blown here and blown there exactly according to the plan of God for exactly a moment as necessary. Sometimes you are blown to a person. Sometimes you are blown to a people. Philip was taken up and blown to one person, the Ethiopian eunuch at the chariot. And from there, he was blown to a city and the city was saved for the Lord. Don't say, God, I'm an apostle. What am I doing speaking to one person? God, I know the calling and gifts you've given me. How can you send me to one person? Be faithful in little. And He will make you faithful with much. We need a generation of people who will be faithful in little so that when much comes, it won't sway their direction. They won't stop being blown by the wind of God when the power of possessions come their way. If you don't learn how to yield to the Holy Spirit now, whatever is stopping you now in the environment you are in will stop you in the future too. It is not something that will go away. It is not something that will take care of itself. It is something you will face, you will defeat, you will overcome, and then you will move forward. The price you pay for moving to the next level from glory to glory is in your mind and in your flesh. Yes, Jesus made the way on the cross. Jesus paid the price with His blood before the throne of God. But the price you pay to enter into that is yielding your mind to the Lord, is yielding your flesh and sometimes doing what you don't want to do in order to have what you want. There is a realm of glory that you are experiencing right now. And just beyond that, there is another realm. Beyond that, there is another realm of glory for you. You will not enter the next realm of glory unless you allow the Holy Spirit to finish the work He is doing in you now. He is not working on you now for your present circumstance or situation. He is working on you now so you can enter the new realm of glory, a higher realm of operation, a new level of expectation, a new type of blessing. But if you don't go with the wind where He leads you, say, God, why are you asking me to go through this? Yes, you have to go through this so you can get here where I want you to be. Are you blessed so far? Do you feel the wind blowing on you right now? I feel it. Let me take you to one last scripture and we come to the conclusion. In Galatians 5 verse 16, I say then, walk in the Spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish. That's what it means to be a living sacrifice. We stay on the altar. We choose to stay on the altar of God. No matter how hot it gets, no matter how difficult it gets, we're gonna remain a living sacrifice, holy, blameless, and pure before the Lord God Almighty. Verse 18, but if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Verse 19 to 23 talks about fruit of the flesh and fruit of the Spirit, which I've already spoken greatly about today. Take verse 24. And those who are Christ's have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. There's no choice in that. If you are Christ's, you have crucified the flesh with its passions. If you are not yet Christ's, then we can expect to see the flesh in your life. But if you belong to Jesus, if you are a Christian, then get ready for the wind is coming. And when the wind blows, it will purify everything in your life. You're gonna ask for the fire of God to fall on you in a minute, but don't be surprised when the fire comes, it burns up everything that's not of God, everything that's a part of your old life, everything that's where you're coming from, and He gets ready to make you red hot, white hot, and then blow you where you're going. Verse 25, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. In the book of Acts 16 verse 6, we can see that Apostle Paul, a man greatly blown by the wind of God all over the world, he wanted to go into Asia. And you would think that's a good thing. Yep, there's plenty of people that need to be reached in Asia. But the wind of God didn't blow him there. It even says the Holy Spirit forbade Paul from going there. Can you imagine that? This shows that the Spirit of God knows what He's doing. He has a plan. He has an agenda. He has a breakthrough for you. And it, where He guides, He will provide. He will never guide you where His grace is not sufficient to cover you. He will never guide you where His provision will not overcome the, the demands that you have. He is faithful. This is why we trust Him. Sometimes you will have a good idea but it's not a God idea. Some, that was Paul's good idea. Let me go and preach to Asia. No one's ever been there. I'll be the first Christian to ever go to Asia. But that wasn't the plan. And thank God it wasn't the plan because we needed the epistles. We need the book of Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. Who knows what would have happened to them if Paul had gone to Asia against the blowing of the Holy Spirit. You can either have a tailwind of the Holy Spirit. That's when He blows from behind you and blows you with a supernatural acceleration forwards. Or in stubbornness and disobedience, you can have a headwind of the Holy Spirit, which is where you're going into the wind. When it gets really windy and God is trying to tell you, hey, this is not the plan, this is not the way, take a moment. Don't be so stubborn. Don't be so proud that no, this is what I prayed for for five years. This must be the time and it's gonna, I want it now. But you also prayed, God, let your will be done in my life. You also prayed, God, take me higher. Take me to where you want me to be. God does not mislead us. But sometimes the ideas and intentions we have from our own mind, from our own desires, from our own ability. Sometimes it's just not the time for them. We must wait for the wind of the Spirit of God. I want you to rise up on your feet one final time. Right now, we're going to let the Holy Spirit have His way in us. Those of you who didn't know where He was, where was the wind, where did it go? He's coming for you right now. Open your hearts, open your lips and begin to speak to Him, invite Him. Holy Spirit, blow again on me. It's a simple prayer. Holy Spirit, blow again on me. Breathe on me, breath of God. Breathe on me, breath of God. Breathe on me, breath of God. The Spirit of God is hovering over the room right now. God spoke when the Spirit was hovering and glory took place and light came into being. Right now, God is waiting for you to speak into the hovering of the Holy Spirit. Speak into that atmosphere and whatever you say, you will have it. Start speaking right now. Holy Spirit, breathe again on my finances. Holy Spirit, breathe again on my business. Holy Spirit, breathe again on my health. Breathe again on my heart. Breathe again on my desire for your word. Breathe again on my desire to pray. Breathe again on my desire for intimacy with you. Breathe on me, Lord, I'm lost. Breathe on me, Lord, I'm in a wilderness. Breathe on me, Lord, I don't know where to go. Breathe on me again, breath of God. Say after me, in the name of Jesus Christ, 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, fall afresh on me. Holy Spirit, fall afresh on me. Fall afresh on me. Fall afresh on me. Say it again and again and again and again. Say it again and again and again. Holy Spirit, fall afresh on me. Don't say it because I'm telling you to. Say it because you want it to happen. Say it because you believe He will touch you right now. He will fall afresh upon you right now. It's a simple prayer. Holy Spirit, fall afresh on me. Fall afresh on me. Fall afresh on me. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Say, Lord, take me higher. Take me higher, Lord. You know when you ask Him to take you higher, He can't take you higher just as you are. He needs to start a new work in you. Because that higher place requires a higher level of commitment. That higher place requires a purer level of character. That higher place requires a closer relationship with Him. So ask Him right now, take me higher, Lord, and prepare me for the journey. Take me higher, Lord, and prepare me for the heights. Take me higher, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Open your lips and pray it right now. Take me higher, Lord, I'm ready for you. Take me higher, Lord, I'm ready for you to do a work in my heart. I'm ready for you to do a work in my life. I'm ready for you to purge me. I'm ready for you to clean me. I'm ready for you to refine me. Do a work in me, Lord. Take me higher. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And lastly, we're going to call on the Holy Spirit to manifest His fire here right now. Ask the wind of God to blow afresh upon you. Ask the fire of God to descend upon your heart and burn up anything that's not of God in it. Ask the fire of God, come into my home, come into my family, come into my children, come into my marriage, Lord. Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire, Holy Ghost fire, in the mighty name of Jesus. Right now open your lips and pray, Oh Holy Spirit, Oh Holy Spirit, fall afresh on me with your fire. Oh Holy Spirit, fall afresh on me with your fire. Burn everything, Lord, that holds me back. Consume every hindrance. Consume every hindrance. Consume every hindrance, Lord. Fire, 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 fire. In the name of Jesus Christ.